ladies and gentlemen, we got a few more hours left. And there is Dan Droller. He no. is executive <laughs> VP at corporate development for Urban Grow. Excuse me there, Dan. Ticker is U-G-R-O. How you doing today? I'm well. How are you, Brent? Doing well, doing well. I will let you take it away and tell uh, tell us a little bit about Urban Grow. Thanks. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dan Droller. Uh, not the CEO. Uh, Brad is in, in Europe right now, wishes he could be presenting, uh, but I'm the EVP of corporate development and investor relations. So uh, Urban Grow is an architecture, engineering, and cultivation design company. Uh, we integrate equipment systems into indoor controlled environment agriculture facilities around the world uh, in both the food-focused vertical farming and cannabis sectors. Um, plainly, we're architect-led design build firm experiencing strong growth in two exciting sectors. Uh, we're leading the charge in indoor controlled environment agriculture and we're traded on the NASDAQ, as Brent said, under the ticker UGRO. Uh, I'm excited to be here today to tell you our story and answer any questions you may have. Um, also worth noting, we have an interview coming up at about 3.40 p.m. Eastern. I encourage you to join. Um, so uh, this is our safe harbor statement. Uh, uh, and with that, uh, let's get started. Um, sorry. So Urban Grow is based in Colorado. Uh, we're in our eighth year and we have over 80 employees uh, of which approximately two thirds are what we refer to as experts. Um, there are architects, there are designers, there are a variety of engineers uh, like mechanical engineers, plumbing, electrical, controls engineers, agriculturalists. Uh, we have a group of plant scientists, uh, horticulturists. Uh, these individuals have decades of experiencing uh, experience growing multiple crop types. Uh, and these individuals are our IP. It's their skill sets, uh, the expertise they have acquired um, from working at least at Urban Grow on nearly 500 controlled environment agriculture facilities. Uh, it sets us apart and provides our competitive advantage as we institutionalize that knowledge. Uh, financially, we are strong as well. Uh, so this is not on here, but we finished 2020 with revenues of $26 million. Uh, we feel that we carry that strong momentum into 2021. As we recently reported, the third quarter of 21, we were, uh, had record revenues of $18.3 million. And uh, that in itself is up sequentially from a record $12.8 million in Q2. Uh, we provided guidance that we'll finish this year with more than $60 million in revenue. Uh, and our trail in 12 months currently sits at $52.4 million. Uh, it's also worth noting we had our second positive net income quarter in Q3. The first was in Q2. Uh, and in Q3, we made a record $1 million of EBITDA. And that is our fifth consecutive positive adjusted EBITDA quarter. Our backlog, it's at $22.5 million. About $4 million of that is services, and the remainder is equipment backlog. Uh, so to Urban Grow, equipment backlog is signed equipment contracts with deposits uh, that have not yet shipped. Uh, generally, uh, that equipment backlog becomes liquid over the next couple of quarters. Uh, combined with our $40.5 million cash position that we uh, had entering Q4, uh, we believe we're going to uh, continue to be in a strong position to execute both our strategic and acquisition plans. Um, so for Urban Grow tomorrow, uh, we are operating in both the cannabis and food focused sectors. Um, our company vision is to be the leading provider of turnkey solutions for the indoor controlled environment agriculture market globally. Uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, the market for our services and solutions, it's sizable and, and it's growing. Uh, US cannabis is expected to grow to about 42 billion by 2025, European cannabis uh, to nearly 4 billion, and food focused vertical farming to approximately 13 billion. Uh, so we're targeting these markets and we believe our growth uh, will be captured under three primary pillars. First, uh, we intend to grow our high margin services offerings. Second, uh, we're going to expand our footprint globally. And third, uh, we're gonna diversify to also excel in the food focused vertical farming sector. Uh, so I'll dive a little deeper, uh, I'll start with services. Today, our services extend for the life of the facility. We were involved throughout the entire process. After engaging our clients very early when, when they're just getting started with their process, uh, we first focus on consultation, uh, design, architecture, engineering, systems integration, procurement, and commissioning of all of the equipment uh, as it has been designed. Once the facility is operational, we have a managed services uh, division. Uh, we currently call it Grow Care. It provides training, 
provides troubleshoot, uh, troubleshooting support, maintenance, uh, and even remote monitoring. Uh, essentially, we're continually assisting our clients in maintaining a perfect environment so that they can focus on what they're best at, uh, which is growing plants and growing profits. Our most exciting development since listing on the NASDAQ in February, aside from continuing to demonstrate uh, our consistent execution against our plans, uh, was completing our acquisition of 2WR and their subsidiary MJ12. Uh, and that happened in, in mid Q3. Uh, with this acquisition, Urban Grow now has the end-to-end -end services capabilities to not only design and provide complete construction documents for cultivation facilities, but now we're also doing dispensaries and extraction facilities and processing facilities. Uh, the 23 person uh, firm, it's an award-winning firm. It's, it's brought tremendous synergies to Urban Grow. Um, we're engaging with clients more than three months earlier than we had been prior uh, and puts us one step closer to being able to deliver on that vision of providing turnkey facilities. Uh, we're currently enjoying the tailwinds of the 70 open projects that they had contracted at the time of acquisition. We're integrating our existing services and equipment solutions into those where applicable. Uh, and you know, thus far, we've been incredibly encouraged by our clients' response uh, to us being able to offer holistic integrated services in a single package. Uh, we believe it adds value to our clients. And again, the response we're getting shows that, that they do too. Um, Last thing on the slide I want to talk about is, is those pictures on the left are, are some of our cultivation facilities and retail storefronts that we've designed. Um, one of the things our clients value beyond our firm's ability to design and engineer the environments within their facilities is that our work conveys a cultivation, a cultivation facility doesn't need to look like a box. Uh, for example, uh, that upper left image is a facility that is being built in a transitional neighborhood. Uh, the design with the, the murals uh, uh, and the graffiti is intended to enhance the area as a whole, and, and we're proud of that approach. Um, supporting all the services I just talked about and to further drive strong equipment sales, we also recently launched Urban Grow Financial Services. So uh, Urban Grow Financial Services, uh, it was launched in response to client request. Um, and the launch of the services solution is focused on providing equipment financing options to our clients on, on all of the equipment that they procure for their facility. Uh, the first partnership we've announced so far for, for UGRO Financial is with XS Financial. Uh, XS is an experienced company in the space. It's been providing funding to MSOs for years, uh, and it's uh, non-dilutive. Uh, it's an option that allows our clients to access capital for equipment at incredibly competitive rates and increase their speed to market. Uh, and minimize and counteract supply chain delays by, by getting those equipment orders in. Uh, for Urban Grow, it allows us to leverage our vendor partnerships and further increase our purchasing power uh, and serves as a great lead generation tool as well. Uh, worth noting that this quarter, we also participated in a convertible note round for excess or, or with excess. We contributed two and a half million dollars out of their $43.5 million round. Uh, and we truly believe that the solution nicely fills a gap in the market. Um, we look forward to both the investment and the partnership, bringing value to our clients and uh, bolstering our shareholder returns. Uh, the second pillar of growth I want to talk about is our global expansion. Um, when I refer to global expansion, you know, we're, we're already active in the U.S. and Canada and, and have been. Um, uh, we're now expanding and have been expanding to the EMEA region. Uh, specifically, we're focused on Europe and the Middle East. Uh, with the challenges from the pandemic in 2020 and 21, the inability to travel, uh, we needed to come up with a flexible approach to entering that market. Uh, earlier this year, uh, we sourced a, uh, some commercial agents in a few countries and signed representation agreements with those agents. Uh, those have proven very fruitful for us. Uh, subsequently, a couple of months ago, we hired a VP of horticulture out of Europe. He's an individual who is based in the Netherlands, uh, and he has over 10 years of experience in the EMEA region. Um, we've created a European entity uh, and are uh, in the process of opening a physical office location. Uh, earlier this year, as our commercial representation agreements were bearing fruit, uh, and you know, as I said, we hired the VP of horticulture, uh, we've been able to freely travel again, uh, so we began participating in some trade shows. Uh, we exhibited it at the ICBC, the, the International Cannabis Business Conference in Berlin in late summer. Uh, we exhibited and took part on a, a pretty great panel at Green Tech in the Netherlands, Green Tech is a leading global horticulture event. 
Um, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the call, um, Brad's unable to be here today giving this presentation because he's currently in Europe. Um, despite the, the recent Omicron surge, uh, he's there right now meeting with clients, uh, potential clients and partners to further develop business and capitalize on the momentum that we've been building there. Um, while we've been actively engaged uh, through our services with several cannabis projects in Europe already, uh, I want to specifically call out uh, uh, something that we announced back in November on our earnings call, that we signed a development agreement with Urban Health Farms. Uh, and this agreement, which we're ecstatic about, it, it represents uh, a long-term approach for us. Um, it's, it's building up to 20 vertical farms throughout Europe for food production. Um, it's great for Urban Grow in terms of our European expansion, uh, as well as our diversification into food. Uh, we're incredibly excited about what it means for us and what it means for Urban Health Farms to be able to succeed with their plans. Um, all combined, our approach is working, um, and we're building a strong pipeline that we look forward to capitalizing and speaking further about with you. Uh, lastly, third pillar I want to talk about is, uh, again, diversifying into food-focused vertical farming. So, it's important to emphasize that, that while the majority of our business has been in the legal cannabis market, uh, we have a decisive advantage when compared to competitors who are entering the non-cannabis sector. Uh, we've been able to learn from working with the highest value crop in the world. Uh, and we're now taking those learnings about properly controlling the environment indoors over to the vertical farming segment. Regardless of the crop being grown, uh, we design, we architect, we engineer, we integrate equipment into these indoor CEA facilities. It uses our same services teams, um, as well as the same custom equipment systems. Uh, we have already been working with some of the top producers in the states. And uh, again, uh, with Urban Health Farms, we're just ecstatic about that agreement and what it means for Europe, as well as uh, diversification into food. Uh, so uh, financial highlights uh, from a valuation standpoint, um, you know, uh, while our public markets peer group consists of some companies that are currently trading at uh, EV up to, up to five times a trillion, 12 months revenue, uh, we're currently trading at an enterprise value uh, there of a little less than two times, or, or frankly, around one time our trail 12 month revenue. Uh, we think we're undervalued. Um, I believe uh, it's a great time for investors right now. Um, you know, we are, all that being said, we're incredibly proud of our strong financial position. Um, entering Q4, we had $40.5 $40 million in cash. Uh, our backlog uh, was $22.5 million. Uh, again, we have zero debt and we are cash flow positive. Uh, on our earnings call, we released guidance that will achieve greater than $60 million in revenue uh, for this year. Uh, again, be positive adjusted EBITDA. Uh, also worth mentioning, uh, back in October, uh, we released a pro forma from the acquisition of the architecture firm. So it's not captured these numbers, only about uh, a couple of months for, for our Q3 numbers. Uh, but just as an example, uh, full year 2020, full year 2020 revenues uh, would have gone from 25.8 to $32 million. 2020 adjusted EBITDA uh, went from a loss of $600,000 to a gain of $400,000. Our 2020 gross margin uh, increased over 400 basis points uh, to 26%. And most importantly for us, um, well, perhaps most importantly for us, services revenue went from 7.8% of total revenues uh, from 2020 to 25%. Uh, and I say most importantly um, is because generally our services uh, beget equipment sales um, and it just, again, helps us provide further value to clients. Um, so taking a bit of a closer look, um, again, uh, on this revenue slide, it's important to note that only two months of the acquisition of uh, the architect firm are represented in the Q3 numbers. Um, but as the slide demonstrates, our strategy is strong. Um, even without that uh, uh, acquisition, our organic growth would have been over 100% um, uh, year on year. Uh, we are delivering sustained revenue growth. Uh, apart from a, a dip due to the pandemic in Q2, uh, we believe that was just a bit of a delay due to the pandemic. Each quarter has grown sequentially. Uh, taking a look at adjusted EBITDA and income for our operations, uh, again, we like looking at this chart because we think it demonstrates the momentum that we have been building over the last several quarters. Uh, with our record revenue of $18.3 million in Q3, we had record positive adjusted EBITDA of $1.1 million. Uh, and for the third quarter in a row, positive income from operations. Um, you know, we first hit positive adjusted EBITDA in the third quarter of last year. I first hit positive income from operations in Q1 of this year. And uh, this past quarter was the second time uh, that we hit positive net income. Uh, taking a look at cash and capitalization, our balance sheet's in great shape again. Uh, 
uh, 40.5 of cash and zero debt. Uh, and our cap table is clean, uh, really clean. So it's all common stock. About 30% of that stock is held by insiders uh, from recent 13F filings. Uh, we know that more than 20% is currently held by institutions. Uh, there are some ETFs that are beginning to take up a sizable position. Um, and uh, you know those warrants are purely from the uplist to NASDAQ in February and options are for our, our employees. So with that and closing and to summarize our position today, uh, we believe we're at the right place uh, at the right time and at, at the right value, especially for investors. Um, the controlled environment agriculture space, including both cannabis and food sectors, has tremendous momentum um, and we're positioned to realize great success in both. We're properly capitalized to fund our strategic plan. We're continuing to add expertise to our team uh, and we're targeting additional acquisitions to complement our continued organic growth. Thus far, 2021 has been a fantastic transformational year for Urban Grow. Uh, and you know, we say this a lot and we, we fully believe that we're just getting started. Uh, so, so thanks Brent for having us here uh, and for everyone else, thank you for investing your time this afternoon to speak with us. Congrats on the great 2021 so far, Dan. Just one thanks. quick question from the audience, yeah. a really good question, so I wanted to ask it. Uh, a user asking, how much does the passing of the Safe Banking Act impact your ability to grow as a business? That's a pretty good one, right, Dan? Yeah, so you know we were we were we were pretty disappointed, uh, obviously, that the the Safe Act was taken out of uh, the Defense Appropriation Bill. Um, you know, Brad, our CEO, sits on the board of the National Cannabis Roundtable. It's uh, sort of an advocacy group for uh, different issues affecting our industry. He sits on the board, uh, you know, with the CEO for True Leave and, and Cresco and Alara Health. Um, they advocate not only for, for legalization, but legalization that uh, uh, respects the integrity of state platforms, uh, but a large component of it is still uh, SAFE Act and access to capital markets. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say about 60% of our business um, is with MSOs at this point. Um, obviously, um, you know, uh, they have uh, ability to get funding right now. Um, but part of our work with YouGrow Financial is to be able to develop ways to allow funding for people that might not have that option um, uh, sure. and or, frankly, uh, the, the social equity component of it. So despite Safe Act not passing, um, we, we still view our business as strong. Um, our customers have found ways to get financing. Uh, we just are advocating strongly for safe and access to capital markets so that they have an easier time to get financing. And, and we think that, that our business will, will grow in accordance with that. But we don't see it hindering our business right now. Certainly. Thanks for answering that, Dan. Dan Droller, yeah. Executive VP, Corporate Development at Urban Grow. It's ticker UGRO. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dan. Hope you have a good rest Thanks, of your guys. day. Yeah, you too. Take care.